Today we're going to review a whole lineup of new batteries. They are specifically server rack lithium iron phosphate and they have three different models. And this is the mystery battery in the background of my videos. So typically I covered it with a moving blanket, but I've actually been testing these for months now. I've actually had these longer than EG4 batteries. So first let's talk about what batteries they offer. They have a 100 amp hour 48 volt and that uses EVE cells. Next they have this battery which is 110 amp amp hours at 48 volts and this one uses cattle cells. And then the third battery they sell is a 220 amp hour monster. It is huge. It is the biggest battery I have and I have it connected to my system right now. And that battery uses cattle cells as well. And this company chooses to only use EVE and cattle cells because they want their batteries to last for a very long time. They can use cheaper cells but they opt not to. But the reason they're doing this is because they want to have the best warranty in the industry. They they stated that everyone else has prorated warranties and that they're going to have a 10 year warranty, no questions asked. Um, I did read the fine print and if you abuse the pack on your own, um, then they will not honor it. But uh, yeah, if you have a shorted cell or something wrong, they will replace the whole pack in the next 10 years. And if you sell your battery, the warranty will transfer to the next owner. They really have high confidence in these batteries. They really want them to be the best around. Now this company has seen my other videos and they know that some of these companies do not have accurate capacity figures. So what they did is that these cells are larger than what they're advertised for. Their 100 amp hour model has 100 105 amp hour cells. The 110 amp hour model, which we have in front of us, has 120 amp hour cattle cells. The 220 amp hour model is actually using 240 amp hour cattle cells. This company has worked in other industries and they're really good with customer care and support. They were going down the list of everything that every other company has been doing and they're like, we're gonna make it better. So I'm actually pretty impressed by what they've done so far. So first First off, let's compare it to the EG4. So first difference is the size. The EG4 is longer, but this one is much taller. And this might be a deal breaker for you if you need a very compact system. Just the volume of the EG4 is much more compact. Now Trophy Battery's 100 amp hour, which we should be comparing to this one, has the same form factor on the front face plate. The only difference between this one and the 100 amp hour is that this one is two inches longer. Next, the main terminals are totally totally different in size. These you can put two watt gauge cables. These ones you can only put two gauge cables and look at the difference in size here. The terminal screw for the EG4 is much smaller. Also notice the size difference of the terminal itself. This has a lot more surface area for the lug to touch. And I prefer this larger one. I can really tighten it down and it's nice having these massive screws. I like this a lot more. Also, the interface is quite different. And this is the EG4 screen. We have the voltage, the current that is going in or out of the battery, state of charge, the state of the battery, so right now it's in standby, and then the temperature. If you press enter, you can see the cell voltages. If you press enter again, you see the temperature of all four temperature sending units. Then you press it again, and then it goes back to the main screen. So very easy to use, I like that. And this is the trophy battery screen. This one is actually pretty cool. It shows the max cell voltage and the minimum cell voltage. It shows the current on top. It shows the voltage of the pack and then the state of charge in amp hour capacity and percentage capacity. And it shows the temperature right here. It has lots of options. If you press menu, you can see BMS parameter and press down battery status, gyro status. I don't know what that is. Set axis, place option vertical. Interesting, I'm gonna to have to ask them about that. So I guess if you change the orientation, you can change it in here. And this screen is better than the Jack appear and better than the SOK right now. I think they're gonna flash those with different firmware, but I like this, this is nice. It shows everything that we need to know and it shows more information than the EG4. Now let's open up this battery and see what's inside. <laughs> Oh no! They have a rivet so you don't try to open it. Wow! Ooh. Oh boy! So first off, these are labeled just like the EG4, so I think it has the same balance cable. 
And the barcode states cattle sell 384 watt hours each. 1, 2, 3, 4, 13, 14, 15, 16. And that's 6,144 watt hours. Now these cells are held in place by foam and tape. And it does work and I don't see any problems on this pack, but personally I prefer the SOK battery. The cell holder is rock solid and it will last a century. The foam and the tape will work as well and a lot of high quality batteries have it, but yeah, I like the SOK better. Now notice that this foam is obstructing these overpressure relief valves and on SOK, there is no obstruction. So I wonder if that's safe to do. Um, I would have to ask a battery engineer. I think it would still be able to vent just fine, but yeah, not as well if it wasn't obstructed. Oh, look at this. So this foam is holding the temperature sensor on the cell. And that actually does work, and I've seen very expensive batteries with that configuration. Specifically the Battleborn, they actually tape down their temp sensor on their cells just like this as well. Personally, I prefer a potted terminal connector attached to the bus bar. That's my favorite configuration. All of the temperature sensors are on this side of the pack. That's not very good. Typically we want one right here, one right here, one right here, and one right here. So keep that in mind, if it gets really cold on the front of the pack, it might not be able to know that. But this might be by design because this BMS in particular has its own ambient temperature sensor on this side of the pack. So maybe that's why they put them all down here. But personally, I like to see them spread out because having the accurate assessment of cell temperature is very important. Also, I realized that with cattle cells, they naturally expand and contract more than others and they have foam on all sides sides so that might have been by design as well and then we have a massive steel bar that goes across the top so that these cells do not shift and hit into the BMS and everything on the BMS looks good every connection is glued uh, the wire management is good it could look a little prettier right here but overall nothing that I can actually criticize here and this is how you turn the BMS off you just unplug this and then it powers the system down and I think that's what EG4 on the Pro model is using with their on and off switch. I haven't opened one up yet, but that's what I'm assuming. But it would be nice if this was tucked away. I really like how they did it on the SOK battery. So overall, I think it's good. I think they could have done better with the temperature sensors and these foam pads. I don't like how it looks. I don't think it's pretty like um, SOK or the EG4. Those ones look a lot better than this on the inside. But it is good. So maybe at the price point with shipping costs, this might be a good option. And I really like these large terminals. They're doing a great job with that. And they're using DC rated circuit breakers that are massive. These cost quite a bit more. So overall, it's a pretty good pack, but they could have done better. Also, this is a new company. How do we know if they're gonna be around for 10 years? Um, they are very professional, and I like whenever I talk to them, they seem to know what they're doing. But let's say they sell a bunch of these and then they're not around in 10 years. So I'm hoping that they can actually make these for a very long time and stand by that warranty. So yeah, I would also think about that. That warranty might not mean much if they're a new company. Another point is this is not user serviceable. Anything with welded terminals to the bus bars, you cannot take these apart on your own. If a cell goes bad, you need to ensure that that warranty will replace the pack. If not, you'll have to throw this whole thing away. The SOK, you can swap out one cell or all the cells or whatever you wish to do. Now one battery company told me they prefer the welded terminals because for warranty issues, you can just get this pack shipped back to the company and then they ship out a brand new battery and that's it. And typically on most of these lithium iron phosphate batteries, even the really cheap ones, there will be a shorted cell out of like one in a thousand. Um, it's, it's pretty darn rare. And if you have high quality cells, it's usually rarer than that. It's like one in 10,000. So it's not an issue that I would be really worried about but they wanna make their warranty system as easy to use as possible. Also, welded terminals have lower resistance than having a bolt, um, but we're gonna measure that on the SOK and see if it's actually noticeable or if it's an issue at all. So overall, it has a good build quality, but I prefer the SOK. Um, for their price and with their warranty, I would say they're very good competition. Um, and I think that this is gonna be their most popular battery. The 220 amp hour is just massive. It is very heavy. And, and I think most people will buy this instead. This is a great size and weight and the quality of cell is very high. Now let's 
let's check out the 220 amp hour that I'm running in my shop. So this is it. This thing is a monster of a battery. Look how big this thing is. And we're gonna do a teardown in a second video to see what's inside. And this battery comes with a very high quality DC rated circuit breaker. Um, I opened this up like four or five months ago and it was really nice. So I can't wait to show you guys that. Also, it has the same terminals as the SOK battery. So that's nice to see, these are really big. These are some of my favorite terminals right here. These are super strong. Also, this display interface is different. This is the same that they have on the 100 amp hour. I like the one on the 110 amp hour or previously in this video more than all of these. I think that one's a lot better. And I think the 110 amp hour will probably sell more than the other ones, but we'll see. So now I want to hear what you guys have to say. Please comment below what your favorite server rack battery is and what you think about this one. A lot of these are around the same price and it's nice to see all of this competition. So yeah, I hope you guys liked the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.